students welcome to the lecture on transport systems indian and international and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives explain the air transport describe the railways describe the road network discuss about sea and waterways in land and outbound Let's start with the concept of transport systems, Indian and international. Transport is the Republic of India in an important part of the nation's economy. Since the economic liberalization of the 1990s, development of infrastructure within the country has progressed at a rapid pace and today there is a wide variety of modes of transport by land, water and air. However, the relatively low GDP of India has meant that access to these modes of transport has not been uniform. In the interim, however, public transport still remains the primary mode of transport for the most of the population and India's public transport systems are among the most heavily utilized in the world. India's rail network is the longest and fourth most heavily used system in the world, transporting over 6 billion passengers and over 350 million tons of freight annually. Let us now discuss the air transport. Rapid economic growth in India has made air travel more affordable. Air India, India's flag carrier, presently operates a fleet of 159 aircraft and plays a major role in connecting India with the rest of the world. Several other foreign airlines connect Indian cities with their major cities across the globe. Kingfisher Airlines, Air India and Jet Airways are the most popular brands in domestic air travel in order of their market share. These airlines connect more than 80 cities across India and also operate overseas routes after the liberalization of Indian aviation. However, a large section of country's air transport system remains untapped even though the Mumbai-Delhi Air Corridor was ranked 6th by the official airline guide in 2007 among the world's busiest routes. Indian airports handled 96 million passengers and 1.5 million tons of cargo in year 2006 to 2007, an increase of 31.4% for passenger and 10.6% for cargo traffic over previous year. The dramatic increase in air traffic for both passengers and cargo in recent years has placed a heavy strain on the country's major airports. Passenger traffic is projected to cross 100 million and cargo to cross 3.3 million tons by year 2010. Airports there are more than 335 2008 estimated civilian airports in India, 250 with paved runways and 96 with unpaved runways and more than 20 international airports in the Republic of India. The Indira Gandhi International Airport and the Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport handle more than half of the air traffic in South Asia. Heliports. As of 2007, there are 30 heliports in India. India also has the world's largest helipad at the Shaichin Glacier, a height of 6400 meters, that is 21,000 feet, above 
means sea level. Pawan Hunts Helicopters Limited is a public sector company that provides helicopter services to ONGC to its offshore locations and also to various state governance in India, particularly in Northeast India. Airline. An airline provides scheduled service with aircraft between airports. Air travel has high up to very high speeds but incurs large waiting times prior and after travel and is therefore often only feasible over longer distance or in areas where lack of ground infrastructure makes other modes of transport impossible. Bus airlines work more similar to the bus stops. An aircraft waits for passengers and takes off when the aircraft is full. Air Transport International LLC, it is an airline based in Little Rock, Arkansas, USA. It operates worldwide cargo and combi charters for the express package industry and freight forwarders as well as for the United States, Department of Defense and the automotive industry. It is also wet leases aircraft. Its main base is Toledo Express Airport. It is a part of the Air Transport Service Group. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the railways. The Indian Railways are one of the largest railway systems in the world. This network consists of more than 7,000 railway stations with a track age of about 8,000 km, covering a route of about 63,000 km. The Indian Railways run 11,000 trains per day. This railway system carries about 441 million tons of good traffic and 4,410 million passengers' journeys per day. Today, more than 95% of IR's freight traffic is limited to 8 to 9 bulk commodities such as coal, POL, raw materials, iron and steel, food grains, fertilizers, sugar, cement, etc. The freight rates are decided on the principles of ability of the commodity to pay. Despite these controls and public obligations, the Indian railways are running on self-generated revenue and are also making a profit. This is quite credible when compared with the worldwide decline of the railway system. Particularly in the more advanced countries, the railways are also inviting participation of private capital through their bold own our wagon schemes and the railway bonds. The key operating strategy of the Indian railways has been to encourage long lead bulk movement in the full train loads called rigs. To achieve this, railways have already replaced steam engines with diesel and electric locomotives. The old types of wagons having vacuum braking, screw coupling, conventional brakings are being replaced with those having pneumatic single or double pipe air brakes, center buffer coupling and roller braking stocks. The main constraints of the Indian railway system are first, congested bottleneck routes, second, congested terminals, third, bad condition of brake handling terminals, no paved circulating area for trucks, no lightning, no enough covered sheds, no full brake length sidings, fourth, Shortage of covered wagons. Fifth, no user-friendly rules and attitudes. Sixth, transit hazards due to pilferage, etc. The action plan to remove these bottlenecks includes such strategies as own our wagon scheme, engine on load scheme, long haul trains, high power locos, electrification, and gauge conversion doubling. Railways are a commonly used mode of long distance transportation in India. Almost all rail operations in India are handled by a state owned organization. Indian Railways, Ministry of Indian Railways, the rail network transverse the length and breadth of country, covering a total of 64,015 kilometers, 39,777 mi. 
It is said to be the fourth largest railway network in the world, transporting over 6 billion passengers and over 350 million tons of freight annually. Locomotives Indian Railways use a specialized classification code for its identifying locomotives. The code is usually three or four letters, followed by a digit identifying the model either assigned chronologically or encoding the power rating of the locomotive. This could be followed by other codes for minor variations in the base model. The three or four letters are from left to right, the gauge of tracks on which the locomotive operates, the type of power source or fuel for the locomotive and the kind of operation and locomotive can be used for. The gauge is coded as W for broad gauge Y for meter gauge Z and the 762mm narrow gauge and N for the 610mm narrow gauge. The power source code is D for diesel A, for AC transaction C, for DC transaction CA, for dual transaction ACDC. There is a wide variety of electric locomotives used ranging between 2800 to 6350 HP, 2.1 to 4.7 MW. They also accommodate the different track voltage in use. Most electrified sections in the country use 25,000 volt AC, but railway lines around Mumbai use the older 1500 V DC system. Thus, Mumbai and surrounding areas are the only places where one can find AC DC dual locomotives of the WCA and WCA AD series. All other electric locomotives are pure AC ones from the WAP, WAG and WAM series. Some specialized electric multiple units on the Western Railway also use dual power systems. There are also some very rare battery powered locomotives primarily used for shunting and yard work. The only steam engines still in service in India operate on two heritage lines, Darjeeling and Uti. Palace on Wheels Plans are afoot to reconvert the Neral Matherin to steam. The oldest steam engine in the world in regular service, the Fairy Queen operates between Delhi and Alwar. Production Units The Chitranjan Locomotive works in Chitranjan makes electronic locomotives, the diesel. Locomotive works in Varanasi makes diesel locomotives, the integral coach. Factory in Perambur makes integral coaches. These have a monocue construction and the flow is an integral unit with the undercarriage. The rail coach factory is in Kapoorthala also makes coaches. The rail wheel factory at Yelangka manufactures wheels and axles. Some electric locomotives have been supplied by Bhegal. Chassis and locomotive components are manufactured in several other plants around the country. Hierarchy of trains. Trains are classified by their average speed. A faster train has fewer stops, that is halls, than a slower one and usually caters to a long distance travel. Many cities have their own dedicated suburban networks to cater to commuters. Currently, suburban networks operate in Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Delhi and Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Pune and Lucknow, Kanpur, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Pune and Lucknow, Kanpur do not have dedicated suburban tracks but share the tracks with long distance trails. New Delhi, Kolkata and Chennai have their own metro networks namely the New Delhi Metro, the Metro and the Chennai MRTS with dedicated tracks mostly laid on a flyover. Ticketing India has some of the lowest train fares in the world and the passenger traffic is heavily subsidized by more expensive higher class fares. Until the late 1980s, Indian railway ticket reservations were done manually. In late 1987, the railway started using a computerized ticketing system. The entire ticketing system went online in 1995 to provide up to date information on status and availability. Today, the ticketing network is computerized to a large extent, with the exception of some remote places. Computerized tickets can be booked for any two points in the country. Tickets can also be booked through internet and via mobile phones through the metal carries an additional surcharge. Discounted tickets are available for senior citizens above 60 years and some other categories of passengers including the disabled, students, sports person, persons afflicted by serious diseases or persons appearing for competitive examinations. One compartment of the lowest class of accommodation is earmarked for ladies in every passenger carrying train. International links India has rail links with Pakistan, Nepal and Bangladesh. It also plans to install a rail system in southern Bhutan. A move to link the railway of India and Sri Lanka never materialized. Before the partition of India, there were eight rail links between what are now India and Pakistan. However, currently there are only two actively maintained rail links between the two countries. Proposed rail links, Indian Railway has planned to install a rail system in southern Bhutan that would be connected to India. Indian Railways and Rail Authorities in China are interested in constructing the high-speed rail link that would link New Delhi with Kunming, China with Myanmar, Private Railways Though the Indian Railways enjoys a near monopoly in India, a few private railways do exist. 
left over the days of the Raj, usually small sections in private estates, etc. There are also some railway lines owned and operated by companies for their own purposes, by plantations, sugar mills, collieries, mines, dams, harbours and ports, etc. The Bombay Port Trust runs a BG railway of its own, as does the Madras Port does. The Calcutta Port Commission Railway is a BG railway. The Vishakapatnam Port Trust has BG and NG, 2 feet 6 inches railways. International rail links between India and neighbouring countries are not well developed. Two trains operate to Pakistan and Samjhota Express between Delhi and Lahore and the Thar Express between Jodhpur and Karachi. Bangladesh is connected by a bi-weekly train, the Mathri Express. Nominal rail links to Nepal exist. Passenger services between Jayanagar and Bijlapur are freight services between Rakshol and Birganj. Railway is a means of conveyance of passengers and goods by the way of real vehicles running on rail tracks. In contrast to road transport, where vehicles mainly run on prepared service, rail vehicles are also directionally guided by the tracks they run on. Track usually consists of steel rails installed on sleepers, tyres and ballast on which the rolling stock usually fitted with metal wheels moves. However, other variations are also possible such as slab track where the rails are fastened to a concrete foundation resting on a prepared subsurface. Passenger trains. A passenger train travels between stations where passengers may embark and disembark. The oversight of the train is the duty of a guard train manager. Passenger trains are part of public transport and often make up the stem of the service with the buses feeding to stations. Infrastructure. Left, railway turnouts, right Chicago Transit, Authority Controls Tower, 18 guides elevated Chicago L North and South Hill Bond. Purple and brown lines intersecting with the east and westbound pink and green lines and the looping orange line above the wells and Lake Street intersection in the loop at the elevated right of the way. Trackage. Track consists of two parallel street lids anchored perpendicular to members called ties, sleepers of timber, concrete steel or plastic to maintain a consistent distance apart a gauge. The track guides the conical flanged wheels keeping the cars on the track without active steering and therefore align trains to be much longer than road vehicles. Signaling. Railway signaling is a system used to control railway traffic safely to prevent trains from colliding. Being guided by fixed rails with low friction, trains are uniquely susceptible to collision since they frequently operate at speeds that do not enable them to stop quickly or within the driver's tightening distance. Electrification. The electrification system provides electrical energy to trains so that they can operate without a prime move on board. This allows lower operating costs but requires large capital investments along the lines. Mainline and tram systems normally have overhead wires which hang from poles along the line. Great separated rapid transit sometimes use a ground third rail stations. A railway station serves as an area where passengers can board and alight from trains. A good station is a yard which is exclusively used for loading and unloading cargo. Large passenger stations have at least one building providing conveniences for passengers such as purchasing tickets and food. Smaller stations typically only consist of a platform. Early stations were sometimes built with both passenger and good facilities. Financing The main source of income for railway companies is from ticket revenue for passenger transport and shipment fees for cargo. Discounts and monthly passes are sometimes available for frequent travellers. Freight revenue may be sold for container slot or for a whole train. Sometimes the ship owners the cars and only rents for haulage. For passenger transport, advertisement income can be significant. Safety Railway is one of the most safest forms of land travel. Train can travel at very high speed but they are heavy, are unable to deviate from the track and require a great distance to stop. Possible accidents include derailment, jumping the track, a collision with another train or collision with an automobile or other vehicle at level crossings. Let's know the meaning of road network. India has a network of national highways connecting all the major cities and state capitals forming the economic backbone of the country. As of 2005, India has a total of 66,590 kilometers, that is 41,377 mi of national highways of which 200 kilometers, 124 mi are classified as expressways. Environmental issues and impact. The national capital, New Delhi, has one of the largest CNG-based transport system as a part of the drive to bring down pollution. In spite of its efforts, it remains the largest contributor to the greenhouse gas emissions in the city. The CNG bus manufacturers in India are Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors, Swaraj Mazda and Hindustan Motors. Compressed natural gas or CNG 
is a clean, safe fuel that has been used in vehicles for decades. With its popularity surging among fleet owners, more want to know about the safety aspects of CNG. One of the questions that comes up about natural gas, just because people aren't familiar with it, is they ask about, what about the safety of natural gas? Um, they know that we're working with compressed gas in containers. Uh, we got to remind folks that there's lots of compressed gas on the road every day. They're out on the highway, they're going to work, and a, a, a truck goes by that's bringing acetylene to a factory, or it might be bringing high-pressure gases to a hospital, oxygen, other kinds of gases that are regularly compressed and delivered on our roadways. But when it comes to the natural gas vehicles, we've got a number of good things working for us. Number one is natural gas is, um, it has a lower specific gravity than air, which means it's, it's lighter than air. So if it were to escape from a leak or uh, through a controlled release, through a pressure relief device, let's say, that gas is going to move up and away. It's going to dissipate into the surrounding air. If you compare that to gasoline or to diesel, they're liquid fuels. They tend to um, basically pool around the vehicle if you have a, a rupture of a tank. Gasoline tanks are usually some sort of rubber liner or, or bladder that's inside a, a thin metal or, or plastic container that's holding that, that fuel. Um, uh, that's certainly not as robust as the technology that we have with CNG tanks, which uh, are four different kinds, type one through four, type one being steel, type four being all composite wrap with a, a plastic liner. These vehicle storage tanks, these, these CNG tanks, uh, can withstand uh, a tremendous amount of, of, of uh, energy, whether it be compaction from an accident. Uh, we have tests where we've taken the tanks and we've dropped them and they've been dented uh, and they'll be taken out of service, of course, at that point, but they haven't ruptured. Uh, we've taken rifle file and fire and, and shot right through them. And uh, there's a loud noise because you have compressed gas leaving that little hole in the tank, but it doesn't explode the tank, it just releases the pressure. And we've even put them on fires where we bring the temperature up to 1500 degrees or more and on the way into that in, in that bonfire that we sit in on to see if we can test it the the devices on those tanks will relieve the pressure well before the burst pressure of that tank that's part of what the whole safety design of the CNG tank systems so natural gas vehicles are very very safe there's always a concern about gee would there be an explosion well, to have an explosion, you need to have the fuel and you have to have the oxygen. And oxygen or air, the oxygen in air, is not going to get inside the tank because outside it's atmospheric pressure. Inside the tank, it's very high pressure. So the fuel will leave the tank. You're not getting that ability to bring the spark into or inside the tank. Now, let's just say uh, that an accident results in someone having a fire. Perhaps the vehicle that hits you is gasoline and its engine or ruptures the fuel line, there's a fire going on. Well, if that fire spreads to the vehicle with the natural gas tank, the natural gas tank has a pressure relief device designed so that as the pressure builds in that tank, so that it does not go to the level of explosion, it will actually release the gas in a controlled way. And that could ignite, but what you'll end up having is what looks like a large Bunsen burner. It's a high pressure flame that's controlled, Firefighters are trained to recognize that that is the safe release of that gas and just to merely uh, keep the rest of the vehicle or any vehicles around it uh, cooled down while that gas burns itself out. So that's a safety feature that's built into all of them. One, one great analogy I like to use with folks is um, if you tried natural gas vehicles back in the 70s and 80s, it's probably like you tried to ray track tape. We've moved on to cassettes, CDs, now we're at MP3 players. Or if you have a cell phone now, it can fit in the palm of your hand. If you remember the very first cell phones, they were about the size of an entire brick, and they had a big antenna on them. The technology has moved generations ahead, uh, about five or six generations of technology movement. Today's natural gas vehicle's performance, as compared to gasoline and diesel, I would say is equal to, and in many cases exceeds, the performance. We're now the new benchmark that those technologies need to reach. Road Transport in India Road Transport in India has a large and extensive transportation system. The country has one of the largest railway and roadway network transporting millions of people every year. However, vast sections of the country's transportation network remains underdeveloped. Highways 
India has a well-developed network of national highways connecting all the major cities and state capitals. Most highways are two lanes, while in some better developed areas they may broaden to four lanes. Close to big cities, highways can even be eight lane. Transportation. Transport on roads can be roughly grouped into two categories: transportation of goods and transportation of people. In many countries, licensing requirements and safety regulations ensure a separation of two industries. Modern roads. Today, roadways are principally asphalt or concrete. Both are based on McAdams' concept of stone aggregate in a binder, asphalt cement or Portland cement, respectively. Asphalt is known as a flexible pavement, one which slowly will flow under the pounding of traffic. Traffic control. Nearly all roadways are built with devices meant to control traffic. Most notable to the motorist are those meant to communicate directly with the driver. Ship transport is watercraft carrying people, passengers, or goods, cargo. Sea transport has been the largest carrier of freight throughout recorded history. Although the importance of sea travel for passengers has decreased due to aviation, it is effective for short trips and pleasure cruises. Transport by water is cheaper than transport by air. Merchant shipping. A nation's shipping fleet, merchant navy, merchant marine, merchant fleet, consists of the ships operated by civilian crews to transport passengers or cargo. Professionals are merchant seamen, merchant sailor, and merchant mariner, or simply seamen, sailor, or mariner. The term seamen or sailor may refer to a member of a country's navy. Ships and watercraft. Ships and other watercraft are used for ship transport. Types can be distinguished by population, size, or cargo type. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Transport in the Republic of India is an important part of the nation's economy. India has 12 major and 187 minor and intermediate ports along its more than 7500 km long coastline. The Indian Railways are one of the largest railway systems in the world. India has a network of national highways connecting all the major cities and state capitals forming the economic backbone of the country. Ship transport can be over any distance by boat, ship, sailboat or barge over oceans and lakes through canals or along rivers.